Welcome back. Now focusing on uh, the forthcoming Kogi State governorship elections. Well, the police uh, recently deployed additional 35,000 policemen uh, for that. Uh, INEC themselves also did raise security concerns, but they have said they're going to do what they can to ensure a peaceful elections. So uh, we have Honorable At uh, Atuma here with us. Uh, yes, he joins, he's right here, that uh, Honorable Lemeka Tima has actually been a former member of the House of Reps, both at the state and federal level. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for well, having me. It's an interesting dynamic now, your party, the candidate. Uh, but the way this is playing out now, uh, several people went to court whilst they were disqualified. But then it does also appear that this may not be the last we may hear of any court matter concerning Kogi governorship elections, because who knows what's going to be the eventual outcome of that of the YDP, uh, as it were. But at the moment, now that this judgment has come through, how do you see that affecting preparations for this election? Um, thank you very much uh, for having me once again. First of all, I'd like, I would like, I would like to start by saying um, the judgment of yesterday is indeed a victory to democracy and that of Nigerian people. Uh, INEC uh, have taken a lot of things in their hands and that have led to a lot of electoral dysfunctioning in this country in the sense that there are certain decisions INEC usually take that are not in consonance with the law or the provisions of the law of the country. INEC um, by themselves wanted to exclude people by the reason of uh, um, having an invalid nomination. And uh, there is no such, such thing in provision of the law. Um, we reminded INEC uh, at the beginning of this whole thing that uh, it would rather be better for them to slow down a little bit with their administrative policies that are eating deep into the pocket of uh, the taxpayers of Nigeria, because whatever mistake INEC does will actually affect the system in itself. So uh, the victory has come yesterday, and probably INEC must have printed their pilot papers and excluding this, particularly my party, Social Democratic Party, and other parties. And uh, this was quite this was a uh, a decision by themselves. And it's, it, will not be, it will not be backed by any law. If you go by the, by the sections of uh, Electoral Act, you know that there is no such provision of making an invalid nomination. And even where the Act itself recognized the invalidity of a nomination, it also provided that INEC should open up and extend and allow party to nominate so that there will be a competitiveness. If you, go to, if you go to Section 38 of Electoral Act, it's provided that INEC must open up, assuming that even the date, their timeline is closed of nomination, and there is no valid nomination made by a party. Is it, is, it, is it that the parties do not have enough time to select their nominees, the candidates that would uh, put... That, is it that the INEC political parties don't have enough time to no, it, no, 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 it's not, it's not it. You know, in a system, things run. And uh, why things are running, um, there are, like, if you get, if you look at, if you look through the law, there are provisions, provisions that a candidate should meet to stand for an election. There are about five of them, and, uh, which includes age and then even uh, the secondary school's qualification. In some cases, you, you might nominate somebody that, like what happened to SDP, you know, not really taking full uh, account that the deputy governorship candidate uh, wasn't up to 35 years old. But that, was, that in itself will not disqualify in his entirety. Okay, let's, let's imagine. Yeah. Well, the judgment is in favor of your party already. Yes, correct. But so, I mean, that one is going, but... This whole exercise could probably have been avoided if, you know, this element that you just mentioned had been avoided by your party having issue. No, I, so. I mean, like I said, things happen. I mean, if you are, do, if you are, if a process is going on and it's within the time frame, uh, there isn't anything 
there isn't anything wrong in it. The law provided that a party must nominate a, a candidate 45 days to election. Election is still in view. And while these whole issues were still going on, the interface between the party and the electoral commission is still going on. It's more than 56 days. And the party had opening. The electoral commission can reject or accept anything given by the party. If you have rejected that the person has, is an underage, mm -hmm. the party still had a window of providing a candidate. Well, you know, what, 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 what you would confuse some people you know, about this whole thing is, look, the political class have a major role to play as far as democracy is concerned. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that many people would expect is, look, let's just keep it smooth. You know, so that everybody, you know, more confidence can come both from the people and from those who want to join your party yeah. to be able to do all this. And so yeah. all these things that you said, when you say things happen, what are the kind of things no. that happen like, that okay. impede the, the, the progress that you want to make so that will make the job of the, easy, the even electoral umpire you talked about even easier? No, I don't think so. I mean, um, in documentation, in the things of documentation, mm. We haven't had any impediment yet. It would have been a problem, assuming that all the entire processes are over, and then election is uh, uh, coming on very closely, maybe a week or maybe about this time, okay. and you suddenly realize that your nomination is not standing the test of the law, which is also in, in, in itself. The commission do not have any right of disqualification. Should we have nominated someone who is even underage, it will be a pronouncement of the court to have that disqualified. Okay. But you know, Honorable Atuma, uh, this judgment has come now. You've been in politics for a while. Yeah. You know you lost momentum. You've lost time. You're yeah. in a race against time. Because if one were your supporter and I wasn't sure what was going to happen, chances are that I might have pitched my tent elsewhere. You know how these things go in politics. So at the moment, you're playing catch up, aren't you? No, I don't think so. It's just, uh, I think uh, what you're saying, we're playing catch-up, yes. But uh, we're also going to look at our catch-up, you know, with what law provided in a situation like this. You know, uh, the, 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 the Electoral Act, uh, I think uh, the members of National Assembly had uh, envisaged the thing of like this will happen. And uh, in their part, in, the, in, the, in, the, in doing the law with disturbity, they were also able to capture it. INEC is left with two options now. And the options is what? to administratively by themselves shift the election date. It's there, in the, it's there in the law. Should you in any way feel that somebody made an invalid domination? It's in Constitution, Section 78. No. Oh. I'm, I'm coming, Chamberlain. Let, I want to get you something. So that, that's where we're going to go. <clears throat> we're still going to go through the law. Because I realized suddenly that speaking with INEC, you know, directly and then letting them understand the provision, INEC is growing more than they should they should in anything. They are not behaving like an institution established by law. They know themselves that what has happened. That's before now. Before now, they even... know. Even now, they know that what has happened yeah. will result by them shifting the election date. They will shift this election date? That, that's what I'm saying. But they will not want to do that because, because they are, INEC is rather be played with politics than law. But we also withdraw their attention to the provisions of the law. They are there. Is that section 70, 178 of the Constitution provided that? Section 38 of Electoral Act provided that. In this situation, I'm playing fair as an unbiased umpire, umpire that we expect them to be. But we're not seeing that from INEC. I don't want to go deeper to the, my interface and the engagement I had with INEC over this situation. If we do, we know that Nigerian people will continue to lose confidence. Well, you may have to eventually, because when INEC eventually speaks, they may deny any such thing. That, Any, that, that didn't happen. Anyway, I will, but, I will want them to bring me and INEC together. I will even want the INEC chairman to appear, so Nigerian people will hear us are together. You, are you fortunately asking for postponement of the election? There's going to be a doubt. Are, are you asking yeah, for it? Yeah, no, no, I'm not. The law provided for it. The law provides for you. Are you asking? And if the law provides, that part ask, of your prayers? No, what I'm saying, yes, of course. If the law provided for it, I will leverage. So I will one, leverage one, one upon moment, what one law moment, has provided. Was was that part of your prayer in, at the court? Uh, yeah, of course, that was part of the grounds. Was seven that, grounds? Yes. Okay. Was that part of the uh, judgment that the, was given in your favor? Was that a pronouncement of the court uh, anyway, that the election should be postponed? Okay. Okay. You know, you see, judgments. Court judgments are procedural. If one judgment have come, 
identifying and including our candidate to being a candidate of this said election, even if there is no consequential order to INEC demanding that the election be postponed. What else are we going to do as a civil citizens? It's to return back to court. INEC would have to go by the law. All I'm saying is that we have to go by the provisions of the law. We are not asking anything that is immoral or something that is not provided by the law. We're not asking for any help. We are Nigerian citizens, and we are, we are bound to be guided by law. And uh, we are not nation governed by politics. Any nation that is governed by politics has, is an endangered nation. Our nation should be seen to be guided by the precepts of law. All right, let's head to Avuja uh, to also get perspectives concerning how does this affect the scheme of things? Because if SDP is going to push or say, according to the law, they need to postpone it. But let's get to Abuja first, and then we'll take it from there. Mark. Thank you, Chamberlain. We have with us this morning Dr. Suleiman Barnabas, who is a political development sociologist, a lecturer, Faculty of Management and Social Sciences at Bayes University, and also an author, Demagogy in the Democratic Republic of Nigeria's Fourth Republic. That would certainly be an interesting read. Uh, but Dr. Barnabas, welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much for having me. We also have with us Mr. Farouk Adejo Aude, who's Director, Media and Publicity, and Spokesman for Musa Wada Campaign Organization. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily as well. Thank you. Good morning, Marco. Well, yesterday you saw the uh, judgment in favor of um, SDP, Social Democratic Party, and you can hear them reacting to it that it was not in the place of INEC uh, to have disqualified their candidates in the first place. Do you think that INEC is an unbiased umpire uh, from their actions so far and the preparations you have seen for Kogi uh, and maybe Bielsa, you might want to add Bielsa to it, do you think that they are an unbiased umpire, they're going to be unbiased in the elections that are coming up in Kogi State. Let's quickly get your assessment, Dr. Banabas. <coughs> well, I think that um, INEC must uh, prove to Nigerians beyond all reasonable doubt that um, they are not partisan. The steps they've taken so far, one of which was the disqualification of some candidates from Kogi and Bayosa, you know, knowing fully well that they do not have the constitutional, uh, it's not within their powers to disqualify candidates. Um, that calls for worry. And uh, so if I'm to answer that question, I would think that um, INEC needs to do more for us to be sure that they are unbiased, that they are independent, because their actions so far, and even their inactions, have shown that um, uh, they may not be totally on the path of um, independence as they should be. Mm. Just quickly, let's quickly get your thoughts. Okay, my own answer will be a categorical no. Why? Good. Um, the constitution of INEC is safe. I'm talking about the composition of INEC. Um, you discover that most people there are partisan. Are they card carrying members of any party? Of course, there was uh, a recent one in the National Assembly, what was the name of the fellow from Washington State, who admitted to being an APC member up to recently. The campaign manager of uh, of the of the the present governor, he admitted that, and as you can see, to all intent and purposes, every election conducted by this INEC under this professor Yakub Mahmoud, everybody, any I mean any any designing observer, any observer that will, I mean that is designing will tell you that they have been very partisan in most elections. Mm -hmm. Some, you, people, you, you some have people will not agree with you. Uh, they would say that, you know, your, par your party, you're a member of the PDP, I believe, yes. uh, that your party has done well, that you're only saying this because you have lost elections in certain places, and perhaps because you, you're facing an incumbent APC uh, governor, and that there are fears that you're trying to prepare the ground, that if you do not win, then it was INEC's fault. Okay, now, let's look at it this way. Any PDP, any PDP candidate that is successful will tell you that among his opponents, apart from the APC person, INEC is another opponent. And most likely the security agencies are, are, are part of, I mean, I mean, also form a block of opponents. That's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. We have seen in cases where somebody is coasting home to victory 
INEC will declare inconclusive. And at the end of the day, the SPC will be allowed to bring in talks openly. Observers will testify to this. Journalists will testify to this. They beat up journalists, beat up observers, so that the APC can I mean, will win. It happened in Norsh, it happened in Kano. So and talking about an APC incumbent in Kogi State that is likely to win, it's, if we have a free and fair election, I can tell you categorically that that candidate will not get 80% of the vote. And I'm not bragging about this. Even he will tell you. And I challenge the media even in Nigeria. he will tell me that he will not win? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that will be the day. <laughs> okay. When even somebody who is the least likely to win will admit that he will not win oh, elections. Okay, maybe, maybe I've been a, a, a little bit uh, hyperbolical. Mm. But I challenge the media in Nigeria. Go and do a survey in Kogi. Go and do an opinion poll. It happens everywhere. I mean, everywhere else. Opinion in the world. polls have been wrong. Op even in places yes. where opinion polls are usually very correct, they have been correct for many years. You saw what happened in the U.S. elections. That is the exception, man. They that were the, wrong. That is the exception. It might be the exception, the but it happens. Well, that is the exception. It's not, not a rule. foolproof measure. That's it's the not point I'm trying to make. But that is the exception. Mm. It has only happened possibly in the case of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That is the only opinion poll that we know that was wrong. And those opinion polls didn't take into consideration a lot of other things. I mean, let's not talk about the Amer uh, American election. But mm -hmm. we knew about the Russian Convention, we knew about a lot of other things mm -hmm. that the opinion polls could have taken into cognizance. Mm -hmm. But if all variables are under control, opinion polls have never been known to be wrong. Well, but I that, cannot, that cannot justify Nigerian, I mean the Ni Nigerians mm -hmm. not doing opinion polls in the elections. Mm -hmm. If you do opinion polls, each channel goes to Kogi to do opinion polls, you will be asking me questions from the result of the poll. Mm. And that result of the result of that poll will show you that the PDP will get at least seventy percent of the votes. That is very interesting. It means you've done your poll, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, of course we have done our own polls. <laughs> okay, I'm, we are commission, we are commission posters. We are I'm, commission I'm glad that you already have results of your polls. Uh, well, let us see how it goes eventually in the elections. Uh, I'm just looking at the what exactly are the accusations that you are putting forward or putting forth against INEC. I want to be very clear. Because in this matter, uh, the SDP matter, it, it is, some people will say it is neither here nor there. Because we saw what happened in Zampara State. Uh, how INEC really did try to bring some sanity into the elections. Last minute, uh, through some very, very interesting scenarios in the court, those candidates were included. Candidates were included in the polls last minute, one minute they were disqualified, next minute they were, they were included by court orders, and then they went into the elections. And then some people decided to take the matter further. And what happened at the end of the day? Those candidates, the entire party, as a matter of fact, lost out. We also saw what happened in uh, River State. If eventually, some people also went to court, and the entire party lost out. This same APC you're talking about lost out in, in, in elections. So when you say that INEC is biased, based on some of the things, I mean, based on this, on this particular decision that it has taken, some people might say it was only doing its job or trying to save itself stress. Uh, what do you say? Let me take your thoughts, Dr. Banapas. Well, let me start by saying that um, the, the political atmosphere, terrain in Nigeria is so difficult that even if you, Maokwe, you know, were appointed as the INEC chairman, you know, accusations and counter accusations will come up because our politicians don't mean well for our country. You hear that? And, and that's whether it's PDP or APC, I mean, they are just self centered. They are not working for the interests of the people. They can go to any extent to see that they win elections, mm. they can undermine the rules. Unfortunately, they have accomplices in INEC, in security ag agencies, to help them, you know, actualize these ungodly uh, goals of um, becoming, getting to power at all costs. So the problem is not the institutions, the problem is that the individuals. Uh, well, it's connected because it's, it's institutions, you know, uh, individuals mind those institutions, but mm. political parties, politicians, are some of, I mean, they constitute a major problem, you know, in our democratic politics. Let's quickly go to Lagos now. We understand that we have another guest on the phone, Chamberlain.
Well, yes, we've got uh, Professor James uh, Appam, who is the resident electoral commissioner for Kogi State for this particular election. He joins us on the line. Good morning, Professor, and thank you for joining us today. Well, we've thank had, uh, you, I don't know if you, I don't know if you heard some uh, comments about INEC and their preparations for the forthcoming elections. But first of all, now that the SDP has got this judgment, what is the position of INEC? Are you going to shift the date or make provision for their names to be on the ballot and continue with the originally determined date? Okay, good. Go good ahead, morning, please. Chevelle. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Now, it is not for me to say that. Uh, I don't have the confidence to say whether we're going to shift the date. Uh, but I think just like uh, I heard Marco say, uh, we've always had some continuity arrangements, just like we did in, uh, in Zamfara. Uh, so I, I hope the Commission of the Book is going to take some steps that would make sure uh, we obey the court orders. Uh, we are a law-abiding citizen, and therefore those court orders are going to be obeyed. But at the moment, Prof, how do you feel? Could you turn down the volume of your TV set? I think it's howling back at us. All right, so how do you feel when you hear political parties accuse INEC? I mean, uh, two months ago or thereabout, it was IPAC, CMPP, all saying that, in fact, they accused you of uh, being compromised and then they wanted you redeployed. But how does that affect preparations and confidence building on your part with politicians ahead of the elections? Well, well, well one of the contributors made the point rightly. Uh, he when to say, even if Mao is appointed the chairman of INEF, uh, she is going to be accused by one party or the other. I think that's just what is playing around. Uh, we... We have not been uh, held back by those accusations. We are making preparations for the elections. We have had several meetings with the various stakeholders uh, in order to give confidence, just like we use the word building confidence. We are preparing on our own part and getting ready by day by day, uh, holding meetings, like I said before, with the various political stakeholders, with the party people, the civil society, the press, and the the ordinary waters, the other groups, as women groups or youth groups, and then we are preparing steadily towards the elections. So, Prof, let me quickly ask you, you talked about, you made mention of confidence and trust and all of that just now. What, in your opinion, is responsible for the erosion of confidence between INEC and political parties uh, because, I mean, from both Lagos and Abuja, the, the, com the comments from the political parties have been that INEC seems to be a contestant as well in this election. So what do you think is responsible for the erosion of confidence? Well, well, there's no reason for that, except those who are accusing us of uh, being biased. We need to come forward and explain. Uh, we hadn't done anything yet. Uh, we're still in the stage of preparing for the elections. So, so I wonder where the accusation of, uh, of uh, being biased came in. Uh, that was made quite early in the stage of our preparations. And so I just left to them to explain why they think we cannot do it. Uh, all we know is that we're preparing for elections. We've met uh, several groups. We've met parties. We told them the various stages we are going to follow. And they're going to have their agents at every stage uh, watching what we're going to be doing. Um, so we think that's enough for us to build enough confidence in, uh, in what we're doing for them to also accept that some confidence has been built. All right, Professor Appam, just give us four minutes. Uh, we'll come back and talk about the preparations and what you have put in place for the forthcoming elections. Please stay with us.